Welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And today we're going to have a eulogy for some of our favorite IP of all time, our mm -hmm. favorite franchises of all time, because it might be time to just move on. Uh, I'm going to tell you the truth. I've been thinking a lot about this because we do a lot of videos. Well, we still probably cover news on it. We are absolutely going to continue to cover news on it. That's, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is fandom has had to go through the stages of grief, the five stages of grief. And at some point you work your way to acceptance. Uh, acceptance being the fact that you know the franchise is dead. You've tried everything. It's not going to come back. It's never going to be what it was before. And you're going to have to make a decision. Do you stick with it or you just move on to something else? Or you just stick with what you loved about it and ignore yeah. the rest. We've always got the reruns. That's right. We always have reruns. So we're going to talk about fandom in the five stages of grief, uh, especially in regards to, you know, I guess the tentpole franchises, Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who. I would throw Dungeons and Dragons into I'm that. Gonna, well, you know, I'm going to say She-Ra. she Roar, that kind of um, stuff. You know, so many classic IPs that meant so much to so many people that we grew up watching, reading, enjoying. Um, they became friends to us. God, this does sound like a eulogy. Uh, they did, and they're, they're gone. Yeah, I'm already depressed. Thanks. Uh, they're gone. And we're going to talk about how fandom has kind of worked its way through that and how just for our own you know, peace of mind, I think we need to, we need to be like, you know what? Uh, we can still laugh at the people making stupid decisions with these franchises, but what we loved about them, it's, it's probably gone. But see, here's what you're forgetting. You're forgetting the fact that even if you, you, we walk away, even if you say, I thought for me, I don't like it. doesn't matter. The fact that you don't like it is unacceptable and you will still be harassed and picked on and everything else. So you, you can't really just walk away because you're not allowed to. Yeah, there is that. Because the so new gatekeepers the... get to gatekeep no matter what. Like I, I said before about Star Wars, I never, ever, ever, ever ran into the trouble uh, about being gatekept or being bullied or harassed or anything until the Disney sequel trilogy and then, you know, people on Twitter. My, my feeling in regards to Star Wars, well, we'll talk more about this uh, here in a little bit, but my feeling in regards to Star Wars is kind of like uh, with Gollum and Lord of the Rings. Like, fine, you, you get the ring and then you get to fall ass backwards in the mm -hmm. lava. And the whole thing blows up. Yeah, you know? same with Shira. I'm like, I, it was the most one of the most accepting fandoms out there until they did the new show. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about this before we get into it. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 185,000 subs. Uh, thank you for the support. We have grown the channel, talking a lot about fandom. Yeah, and because we know what it's like. <laughs> we know what it's like, and we've watched, you know, our childhoods kind of go up in flames uh, time and time and time again. We've watched stupid people come in and make well, stupid decisions. I mostly do the videos because I get tired of watching me or other people get called names simply because they don't like a stupid show or movie. You know, I've been thinking about it a lot lately. We've talked about we've talked about before, you know, off the air, we've talked about, you know, the stages of grief and a lot of what is going on in, in fandom right now, the anger, the disappointment, it really lines up with losing a loved one. Well, for a lot of people, it is like losing a loved one. It's so important to you. Yeah. It's so, you know, it, you know, part of you, who you are and why you like what you like and why you make choices you make in some cases. It's so, you know, relevant to your per your personality that, you know, you, of course, it's like losing part of something. Especially if it's something that you grew up loving, something that maybe got you through a very difficult time. Mm -hmm. Uh, in life, a lot of people turn to, you know, different, uh, you know, science fiction franchises yeah. or movies or favorite comic books or whatever. And then when you see somebody else come in that doesn't have the same feeling for it, the same respect for it, and then not only are they uh, kind of desecrating this thing that you loved in, in your opinion, but they're also mocking people who have a problem with see, that. That's where I draw the line is the mocking people, because it's like, I don't, if, if someone wants to like, like the new things, they're allowed to like it. I always say you're allowed to like it, but you're allowed not to like it too. But the problem anymore, especially in the last five or six years, especially with like Twitter in particular, mm. you are not allowed to not like something if they say it's good because they said so. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's like in the past, if you disagree, you agree to disagree and you move on. And now um, they, it's like, you better agree with us or, you know, we're going to kick your ass and, and call you names and write hit pieces on you calling you alt-right because you didn't like the movie I liked. 
Yeah, it, it's getting ridiculous. It is, it's past getting ridiculous. Uh, but it's also getting to the point where it's like, you know, what what else can you do? Because you, you get angry, you you go through, and we're going to talk about the five stages of grief. You see headlines like this, you know, get over it. Uh, Star Wars is dead, and it makes you angry. But then part of you, on some levels, like the Star Wars I grew up with, is dead. Mm-hmm. It's gone. It's not coming back, at least not under the current regime. Well, I find this ironic because for a long time, no one was covering the sequel trilogy. No. Like, we weren't mentioning it. Like, people weren't mentioning it. They just kind of moved on or was on to, like, you know, the higher public or if they even cared at all. Mm-hmm. They were on to other properties. But then a couple months ago, and I've pointed this out many times, all of a sudden, here comes the media trying to bring up Brian Johnson and, yeah. the, and the Last Jedi again. And then his book, him getting his, tri- or him getting his trilogy again. And then it was, it's been all dug up by these people. And the only ones who still gave a shit about it all were the Raylos. Everybody else had moved on and stopped talking about it. So I love it. Star Wars is dead, Jet X. Just get over it. And it's like, well, Star Wars is dead, Raylos. Get the hell over it. Because <laughs> you're the ones that brought it back up. Everybody else kind of moved on. Yeah. You know, so now you know what it's like. Yeah. Um, and that's that's what I think it's going to take to to change the, uh, the opinions of some of these people. Is they're going to have to see the people that delighted in watching... Our childhoods burned down. Mm-hmm. Mocked and, us. Get over it, you man baby. Yeah. Man baby. Literally, man baby tear mugs and stuff like that. You know. When. Fanboy th- tears. Yeah, when their time comes. And we're it's seeing it. It's coming now. now. Powerpuff Girls, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Well, even the Star Wars. They, they, everybody stopped talking about it. They yeah. moved on. They stepped over it. It was a stinker. They said their Disney was trying to distance themselves. They had all these new shows come out on Disney Plus. And then they they, they, they kept the Gina Carano thing. They kept going around. Anytime it, anything was mentioned on Disney Plus, they were fire Gina Carano, fire Rosario Dawson, fire, fire, fire. Because we, you know. And fire, then, fire. And, yeah, yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. did. But then they're like, but you're downvoting all the, the stuff on the Star Wars thing. And I'm like, we did the same damn thing. But my yeah. point is, you guys haven't let it go. You're pissed because no one's no one gives a shit about The Last Jedi anymore. Yeah. Welcome so, to the club. Welcome to the club. Now you know how it feels. But let's let's go through the five stages of grief because I am seeing this in the fandom. Um, we've experienced this ourselves. And like you said, it is like losing a loved one. When you've got a franchise that I know it's just space wizards or you know star trek or whatever when you see an old friend like that dragged you Mm -hmm. know and then you realize that 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 person is that franchise is never going to be what it was ever again you know it might still exist in some form but you know your memories of it your feelings toward it those are in the past well i think the way that they they treat people it has a lot to do with it too. I think people could got past a lot of it, but they were treated so poorly by the studios yeah. for these different properties that the fans are treated so shitty that they just, you know. Well, we talked about that before too, that the fandom, you know, was in a, an abusive relationship because mm-hmm. the studios. We did do a video on that. Yeah. The studios basically tell you, you're going to like our version of it. Uh, even if we are literally, you know, pissing in your mouth, mm-hmm. uh, you're going to love our version of of this classic IP. And if you say anything negative about it, we're going to use the well, media. It would be use... real shame if you got labeled an istophobe so yeah. everybody knew what a horrible person you were because you didn't like our version of a film. <laughs> yeah, it would be a real shame if you don't like The Last Jedi and we we use our crazy-ass Raylos to, to paint you as an alt-right Nazi. Mm-hmm. That would be a real shame, wouldn't, wouldn't it? it? Yep. Yeah, so th- these are the uh, the five stages of grief. According to Very Well Mind, and I like these little cartoons they had here. Uh, the first is denial. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. This can't, this isn't, you know, they're, they've got to trick up their sleeve. I remember I did not like The Force Awakens, but yeah. I was more than willing to give The Last Jedi a chance because I thought, okay, I get why they did The Force Awakens. They did A New Hope all over again. Now they're going to move on to new stuff. And I was like, yeah, I'll give it a chance. And then I hit anger. <laughs> so. Yeah. Or, well, they're going to, you know, denial too. A big part of it is, no, no, no. This is, they're, they're going to retcon this away. This isn't, mm-hmm. this isn't a permanent thing. They're going to fix it. Don't they're going to fix it. It's, they didn't just retcon my favorite character. They didn't just, whatever. It's, no, no, no. This, the studio knows what they're doing. We just have to be patient. They've got our best interests in mind. It's, mm-hmm. They wouldn't know. treat the fans that way. They would never why treat would, the fans that way. Why would you treat the fans that way? Because they're the ones that you need You need to be on your side to, to sell product, to, yep. to buy tickets. Yep. You know, so I'm sure, like, you know, the twist is coming, you know? The big t- the big twist reveal that, you know, we were, our, our faith has been rewarded. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately... Most times, anymore, that that doesn't happen. Luke Skywalker was a one-off. Uh, the next stage is anger. 
which uh, a lot of fans stayed in for a very long time, uh, ourselves included. Um, you know, first we were angry about franchises being completely disrespected and, in our opinion, torn down, destroyed. And then we got angry because, again, like you were saying, if if you say anything about the mistreatment of these old friends of yours, then you're a horrible person. Right. If you don't like it, it's because there's something wrong with you. So a lot of people got angry because a lot of these very inclusive fan groups and, and you know, properties that, you know, have been for decades welcoming to everyone were suddenly very unwelcoming to yeah. a lot of people. Yep. Um, with an, while saying that, that they were fixing it because it was unwelcoming to people, which was a, lo a load of shit. Because I can tell you for a fact, like Star Wars and She-Ra at least have been very, have always been very diverse, have always been very welcoming and inclusive. And then they get these new things and then and then these people came in and basically gatekept everybody else out. And if you didn't love it, it's not because, well, maybe you had a different opinion. You weren't allowed in the club anymore unless you loved their version. Yeah. But yeah. it was okay if they shit on yours. That's fine. Yeah. So the anger stage, you know, for a lot of fans lasted for a very long time and it's exhausting. Anger mm -hmm. is, and that's why I was, I, I kind of got thinking about this again, because we, we've had this conversation before and I got thinking about it again last night because I was basically like, God, it's, it's really hard to be angry all the time when you know it's probably not going to change anything. It doesn't change anything. They've proven time and time again that it's not going to change a damn thing. Yeah. And the more you complain, the more you scream, the more they dismiss you, the more they try to label you as different things. And they look for ammo. They pour through your social media. And like, you said these angry things. You're literally a Nazi. Mm -hmm. um, so then the next stage is bargaining. Now, we've seen this happen before, too, with the fandoms. Fans are like, well... Uh, if we throw more money at you, you'll listen to us. Mm -hmm. uh, if we support this other stuff, even if we don't really like it very much, maybe we'll get thrown a bone and the studios or the publishers will give us stuff that we want. Mm -hmm. If we pretend to be a good fan and we keep our head down, uh, maybe you'll bring back that thing that we loved. Yeah, they're not going to. And it doesn't happen. No. Uh, you they know. still call you names, even if you say nothing, except for one time you post a picture of, oh, my favorite character, and it's like from an OG thing, then you still get harassed. You're not even allowed to like the old stuff, because if you like the old stuff, you're in trouble. Well, that happened, that happened with She-Ra, I mean, especially. Like, you were allowed to post any classic She-Ra stuff without people shitting on mm. you and being like, I know She-Ra's better. You know? And you're like, okay, well, I'll watch. And I did that. I watched the first few se the, the seasons of the new show because I'm like, okay, well, maybe if I, you know, give it a chance, I'll like it. But maybe if I give it a chance, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm supporting that somewhat, maybe they'll, you know, make more of what I like, which turned out they, they, they are making more of what I like. So, oh, yeah, you know. that's true. But I wasn't going to take, but it was, it was shit. And I wasn't going to say it was good when it wasn't just because they wanted me to. I'm not going to bargain that much. Yeah. Uh, so then you move on to possible depression. So when you build your life around a franchise or a collecting comics or playing video games or whatever, and then you realize things are not going to be the way that I want them to be ever again, <laughs> at yeah. least not with these people in charge, you're going to go through some kind of depression. You're gonna, well, it's you know, a it's, loss. It's a, you feel like a, it is. a definite loss. Like, like video games or Star Wars or comic books or whatever it is you're into, that was an old friend. I could always, no matter how hard the real world was, I could always sort of, you know, come into this little world and, you know, get get away from it. And it was a friend. And now that friend is You're not allowed gone. to be in that world. And certain people are no. allowed in that world because these new gatekeepers said so. So, yeah, it's going to cause you to be sad. It might get to a place where you don't even want to look at anything associated with it because it makes you feel sad. Um, and then you're not allowed to like what you like because they already tell you that. So that's going to make you sad. You're not allowed just like, okay, well, you can have this, but I want to keep that. But they keep telling you you should. But you're not allowed to have that. They say that, but you're actually not allowed to have it. You're still harassed and picked on if you don't love what they love. Yeah, and and I'm seeing you know different uh, different uh, aspects of fandom, different uh, fan groups working their way through these various. Yeah, I think Raylos are in the, in the middle of it right now. Yeah, it's like how does it feel? Because we went through this a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. You know, we lost something we loved. We got you know bait and switch. Uh, how does it feel? I love what I love in the you know depression element is this whole idea that you know if you 
you're not allowed to say something negative about something because don't you know that you're going to make people feel bad and you're going to you're going to make them depressed and they're going to kill themselves and you're harassing people because by you not liking this you clearly are against all these people that are like that because you know there's no nuance in what you like and you're going to cause them to, 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 to commit suicide and be depressed and it's like but meanwhile they're going to go harass you and everybody who, who you know who doesn't like what they like until the point of you know you where you could kill, kill yourself and that's fine yeah that's totally fine depression on that side doesn't matter because you're just a nazi right right you should go home right, die. you know so after we get through all this then you get to acceptance now what does acceptance look like? It doesn't mean... I think it means apathy at this point. I think it does. I, I really think it does. I think it, you get to a point where, you know, in regards to, you know, say Star Wars or comics or whatever, you know, I, I get angry about the lies that the media spin. Yeah, that's where I am. Um, you know, and that sort of thing. But I also realize, like, there's nothing we can do to change it. And when they tried to change it, they found a way to ruin that, too. Yeah. You know, when they did try to fix it with um, Disney Plus and try to get the fans back, um, they found a way to destroy that as well. Yeah. So, I mean, they're not, they don't care. They're not going to. I mean, Disney might care. Lucasfilm doesn't. I don't even know if Disney cares. I mean, because that's the thing, too. You got to realize. they do. Well, uh, look at. Okay. They're losing money. They care. They care about losing money. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, look at George Lucas. I think George Lucas. Dude, he cares. He's working through those five stages of grief. When he's referring to Star Wars as his children and he feels like he sold them to white slavers and he's making comments recently. Now, they took that video down, but he was making comments when they were doing what him and his wife were doing the, the stream at the one school uh, about how, you know, it's not his Star Wars anymore. And he you could that look on his face was I really miss my baby. Mm -hmm. This was my life, and I sold it, and I miss it. And look at her face. It. was like, oh, no, don't ask that question. It was like, don't ask George about Star Wars. Oh, please, Jesus, don't ask George yeah. about Star Wars. And he did, and she just kind of like, you saw, she was all smiles before that, and then she just had this grimace She's on her face. She's looking at him like, like, don't do it. Don't do it, darling. Don't do it. And he started talking, and she looked like a woman on a roller coaster who didn't like roller coasters. <laughs> Uh, you know, she had that look, that Splash Mountain uh, Karen look on her face. You know, if you ever saw that photo with the woman going oh, yes. down it on Splash Mountain, she's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not real happy. So I think acceptance looks like, you know, realizing that it's not going to be for you, at least not this incarnation. And I think you also have to realize that, like, you know, these franchises, as long as the people who created them are not in charge, it's it's basically just an IP to some studio. Well, the kicker is they could have made the stages of grief so much easier on people if they hadn't just spent all their time attacking people and belittling yeah. people and lying about people and all that. And I think that they made it so much worse than it had to be. Oh, no, it would be like, hey. Hey, I heard your dog died. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad your dog's dead. You know why? Because you're a Nazi. You're a Nazi. You're, you, you deserve know, to have your dog die. Because you don't like that. You don't like that this character is is not straight white and male. So you're a Nazi and you deserve it. You know. Yeah, that's it's, exactly what it's, it's like. It's, it's, like, it's like just pouring salt in the room. Like you, you, you suck. You, I'm glad your dog. Then you got the director dead. out there. You know, it, it'd be like if the director. It would be like if uh, Favreau and Filoni, when people were liking the Disney Plus Mandalorian, were out there like you know, you know, Raylo tear cups and stuff like yeah, that, and calling yeah. them names like they like. This is how they were treating people um, on the other side of it. And it's like bad behavior is bad behavior. And I love how when when it ha when, when it happens to them, it's everybody's just picking on them. But they spent years treating other people like that, and that's okay but we never had the trouble we had with fandoms and exclusionary practices as we've had since these people showed up no and so now I, I guess my feeling is like what what happens next for a lot of fans i mean you can either stay stuck in anger and depression mode forever or you can like what you like and like what you like and save Fuck you to them. Sorry, mom. Yeah, just remember the good days. Uh, remember playing with you know Sparky the dog when Sparky the dog. But you was stop. Alive. With the, don't. Um, you're breaking my heart. Stop it. Uh, but but also realize that, like you can't go back in time. It's you're not. It's you're never. It's never going to be, you know, 1983 in your bedroom again. That sounds weird. But it does you know, sound weird. don't say that again. Yeah, but it's it's not going to be. So uh, you know, I guess at some point you have to be like, okay, so. You have to be willing to walk away. And I think so many fans are not willing to walk away. 
See, my thing is, for me, I'm the eternal optimist, so I'm always hopeful that something will change, um, even though I, I know it probably won't. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and wait, you know, sit around waiting for it. If it no. changes, I'll come back. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, I don't want to constantly be, I mean, oh my gosh, for heaven's sakes, all I did was point out that the Star Wars account on Twitter wasn't updating for a while, and I wonder what was up with that. And then I get this really crazy person on there um, going on about, they were talking to somebody else at first, but they were, they were making these really weird comments, mm -hmm. calling me a bitch and everything else. Oh, yeah, or, was... I guess they were calling him a, him a bitch, Yeah. Um, it turned out. But, you know, they blocked me, and I hadn't even done anything, and it was all on this thread, and all I had done was say, it's a little weird to not tweeting. I wonder what's up with that. Hmm. I mean, that's all I said. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, again, you know, the sequel trilogy fans are, they're working, they're working their way through the five stages of grief at this point too, because it basically, uh, they got halfway through it, decided to just, you know, completely go in another direction with it. And uh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. They all were pissed when Rise of Skywalker undid The Last Jedi. Yep, and I'm like, yeah, how how you like them them apples? Now they now they keep trying to bring uh, Ryan Johnson back in and get him his trilogy. Um, Disney, if you do that, you deserve whatever shit you get because that's the the epitome of stupidity. You know, I I the epitome of stupidity. Yes, yeah. so that three times that needs to be a shirt. Um, so you know, I look at this and you look at like how many how much of the stuff we loved was so dependent on one person or a small group of people. Mm -hmm. You know, and they were never meant to be corporate things. I mean, Star Trek was very much Gene Roddenberry's baby, and it changed after he died. Uh, you know, Star Wars, obviously, George Lucas's changed. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, no more Gary Gygax, mm -hmm. and it went to hell in a handbasket. You know, so I, th I think the thing is, is that, like, you have to realize under corporate ownership, a lot of these things that you love, they're they're going to change. And corporate ownership has to understand that if you keep changing things too drastically, you're going to lose your core fans. And you might gain a bunch of very vocal, screechy people on Twitter, <laughs> but they don't buy your stuff. No. And they actually chase off fans that maybe still were partially on your side because they have any criticism whatsoever that they automatically get labeled and they get chased away. People who might have had a criticism about something as simple as the cinematography in a scene were also labeled that they hated, you know, gay people, you yeah, know, it's they hate black people or whatever and they were they were, you know, harassed, uh, you know, harassed until they they just stopped caring. So the problem is you really need to to understand that who you're catering to is actually causing you more of a problem. Yeah. Um, because for all the yelling that, oh no, the toxic fans. Yes, there are some toxic fans out there, but there are some very, very toxic fans and they're the people you've been courting. Yeah, because they thought that they were going to expand their audience and what they did is they alienated the court. They're pushing audience. everybody to the five stages of grief where they get to acceptance, which is basically apathy. And yeah, then that is. then you're screwed completely. Yeah, look at this woman here. She's like, I do not give a shit about anything. And that is, that is where a lot of fans are at with a lot of these aged franchises are like, this isn't mine anymore. I've already worked through my issues. I'm done. I'm out. And look, they might not go on YouTube and complain about it vocally. They just won't buy stuff anymore. They well, won't they, buy tickets. They, they would have, like, I still would buy classic Star Wars, but eventually I'm probably going to get to a point if I could get harassed all the time for not liking what they like, I'll probably get to a point where I won't even do that. You yeah. know, I mean, it's like you might have some fans who still are your fans, but they're fans of other other aspects of it. You're going to lose them, too, because people that, you know, are pushing that are pushing them through to, to they get to the place where they're apathetic because they don't they're so tired of being, you know, targeted and harassed all the damn time. But people who yell about targeting and harassing yeah. harassment. I think what's going to have to happen is a lot of us are going to have to move on and find other things to be to be fans of and mm -hmm. also keep in the back of our minds that, uh, you know, there is the possibility someday that, you know, this this thing that we love will get sold. Especially to, since Hollywood's creatively bankrupt. Yeah, yeah, just enjoy the time that you have with it. Enjoy the enjoyment that you have with it. And, uh, you know, don't don't take it for granted when you've got a good show or you've got a good whatever, because mm -hmm. we know how fast things can change. And, uh, you know, find some other hobbies too. get out, That's get, right. <laughs> get out of the house. I mean, if your entire identity is wrapped up in, in a science fiction franchise or in a comic book series or what, I, no offense, but you need to get out more and live some more life. You know? Yeah. But don't yeah. you don't have to let people talk about you like that. Either. No, no, not at all. So we're gonna yeah, wrap sure this one. Won't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we gotta wrap this one up. Yep. All right. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys, and we will talk to you later. Bye.